uh, excellent sound. When we hear the bell, we uh, practice listening to the bell deeply. We go back to our breath, listen, listen, we breathe in. This wonderful sound brings me back to my true home. We breathe out. Very enjoyable practice. A day of mindfulness is a celebration of life. We come together as uh, Sangha, a community of brothers and sisters. We enjoy being there together in mindfulness. First of all, please enjoy this guided meditation exercise. It's very pleasant. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. In, out. And if you like, you can smile while breathing out several times. Let us do that again. If you are a little bit uh, not awake, and then focus your attention on your abdomen while breathing in and breathing out. And if you are a little bit excited, if you are thinking a lot, and then focus your attention on your abdomen. And if you are not uh, very awake, and then focus your attention on the tip of your nose. Like a garden, noticing the air coming in and the air coming out. In, out. That is when your attention is focused on the tip of your nose. But if you have the tendency to be thinking a lot and then move your attention down to the level of uh, the navel and notice the movement of the abdomen in, out. When you breathe in, your abdomen rises. And when you breathe out, your abdomen falls. Enjoy. Breathing in, I know I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I know I'm breathing out. In, out. Breathing in, I notice that my in-breath has become deep. Breathing out, I notice that my out-breath has become slow. Deep, slow. Enjoy. My in-breath become deeper in a very natural way. I do not uh, force it to be deeper. It just becomes deeper because uh, I have been practicing breathing in and out mindfully and that is why my in-breath has become naturally deeper and my out-breath has become naturally slower and my enjoyment of my breathing 
has increased. So if you feel that you enjoy your deep and slow breath, it means that you are practicing correctly. Shall we try again? Deep, slow. And if you feel it pleasant, smile during your out breath. Breathe in, I calm my body. Breathe out, I ease everything. Calm, ease. When you breathe in, the in-breath is making your body calm. And as you are in a meditation posture, your mind is becoming calm also. So body here means also mind. Breathing in, I calm my body and my mind. Breathing out, I ease everything. I let everything at ease. Calm, ease. Several times. Breathing in, I smile. Breathing out, I release. Smiling means to bring relaxation to all the muscles on your face. There are about 300 of them on your face. Every time you smile, you relax all these 300 muscles on your face. And your nervous system becomes relaxed. And smiling here is to smile, to smile to yourself. That is the practice of loving kindness, directed to oneself. Breathing in, I smile. Breathing out, I release. Release here means to let go of everything, including our projects, our worries, our tensions so that we be able to enjoy our presence in the here and now. We become free, free from our own sorrow and suffering, from our own projects, from our own tensions. Breathing in, I smile. Nothing is as important as my peace, my joy. I smile to everything, even to my suffering, to my difficulties. Breathing out, I release, I let go. This is a practice of freedom. Smile when you breathe in. Release when you breathe out. Smile, release several times. Breathing in, I go back to the present moment. Breathing out, I know this is a wonderful moment. The moment when I realize that I'm still alive. I can touch life. 
because to be alive is a miracle. To be alive and to know that you are alive is the greatest of all miracles. And if you don't go back to the present moment, you cannot perform that miracle. Breathing in, I establish myself in the present moment. Breathing out, I realize that it is a wonderful moment. In fact, it is the only moment available to me to live. This is a wonderful exercise. Present moment, breathing in. Wonderful moment, breathing out. And if you have some concentration, that exercise will bring you a lot of joy. Present moment, wonderful moment. Dear friends, these exercises could be um, practiced everywhere, at any time. When you sit on a bus, you can practice these exercises. When you are in the kitchen preparing breakfast, you can practice these exercises. You can also practice uh, during uh, walking. If you you are walking from one building to another building, then you can practice these exercises. When you line up to wait for your time to do something, you can do that also. Walking meditation is a wonderful way of establishing calm, in ourselves and getting nourished by the wonders of life in the present moment. In France, I used to teach children walking meditation with just uh, two words, oui and merci. When they breathe in, they say, oui, oui, yes, yes. Uh, you may like to do like them also. When you breathe in, you make three steps. Yes, yes, yes. I uh, wanted the children to say yes, to learn to say yes to life, to the earth. We, we. And then when they breathe out, they say, Merci. Merci. They say thanks to the earth, to life. And they enjoy it very much. When we practice walking meditation, we coordinate our breathing with the steps we make. It depends on our lungs that we make uh, three steps or four steps while breathing in or while breathing out. Give our lungs the exact number of steps they want. It may be that breathing in, your lungs want two steps, but while breathing out, your lungs want three steps. So you may say, yes, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. So listen to the need of your lungs and give them exactly the number of steps they want. And while you practice walking meditation, focus your attention on the contact between your feet and the ground. Do not dwell here on the level of your brain. Go down and pay attention on the sole of your feet. And breathe as if you breathe with your feet. 
touch the earth with love, with mindfulness, with care, as if you kiss the earth with your feet, will be very healing. We have done a lot of damage to the earth. Now it's time to go back and say thank you to the earth. Kiss the earth with our feet. And we know what to do and what not to do in order to take care of Mother Earth. The earth will receive healing from us and we will receive the healing from the earth. And if every day you can practice walking meditation one time, two times, you profit a lot from the practice. During walking meditation, from time to time, uh, we hear a bell and we would stop walking. We will uh, enjoy what is there around us, the vegetation, the blue sky. We touch uh, the blue sky, the vegetation, the bird song with our mindfulness. Ask yourself whether these things are real or not in that moment. Is it real? With what you touch in the present moment, if you don't touch them mindfully and deeply, everything will become a dream, our life also. So the secret is to live deeply each moment of our life. When you see the blue sky, touch it with your mindfulness. When you hold your child, hold her or him in deep mindfulness. All these things happen in the present moment. If you do that, you will not regret it later on. If we do not live our moments deeply in mindfulness, everything will become a dream. And that is why when uh, we touch the earth with our feet, touch deeply, when we touch the sky with our uh, eyes, touch deeply, and you know very well that the deepest teaching is with mindfulness. And after breathing in and out, and enjoying what is around us, we will resume walking again. Walking mindfully, we combine our steps with our breath. We may do in, 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 out, 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 for a number of times. And Then we switch into deep, 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 slow, slow, slow. So do the exercise that you like. In, out, or deep, slow, or calm, ease, or smile, release. But don't forget the last one. Present moment, present moment, a wonderful moment, wonderful moment. If you have some concentration, this exercise will bring you a lot of uh, joy, nourishment. And of course, if we talk, we cannot do, we cannot do it. Well, there are days of mindfulness where thousands of people participate. And the energy of mindfulness emitted by the group is very powerful. And uh, walking like that can generate a lot of uh, energy that will transform us and transform the people around us. And uh, in retreats of mindfulness, we do everything mindfully, and that is the cultivation of the energy of mindfulness. The energy of mindfulness is the kind of energy that can heal and transform. 
Buddha, Bodhisattvas are beings who have that kind of energy. And that is why when they touch something, they can heal. They can transform. Practicing mindfulness, we generate that kind of uh, energy that can touch the suffering and then can touch the wonders of life. When we touch the wonders of life in the present moment, we get nourished by these wonders of life. With mindfulness, I touch the sky and I smile mindfully. I am nourished by the blue sky. With mindfulness, I touch uh, the beautiful vegetation around me. And I am nourished by the green vegetation around me. There are many wonders of life within us and around us. And it is very important to practice touching them with our mindfulness in order to get nourished. Otherwise, we will die slowly if we only touch uh, the painful things in life. To practice mindfulness, we need the support of the people around us. Because we have the tendency to believe that uh, meditation practice is an individual matter. No, we can practice as uh, friends, as a family even as a city or as a nation. People around us can use their mindfulness in order to help us to see more clearly, to support us in our practice. Their presence around us, their mindfulness will support us. And the people who knows us, who practice with us, can sit together with us, practicing, looking deeply, and will help us to see into the true nature of our pain, our suffering. And the moment when we know, when we see all the roots of our suffering, we are enlightened. That kind of insight will help us to get out and to transform. And that is why it's very important for us to join a group of friends for the practice of mindful touching and mindful transformation. We should belong to a group of practitioners. We should try to transform our family into a practice community. We must find other friends in order to set up a Sangha. A Sangha means uh, a community of practice. We come together to organize a day of mindfulness or mindfulness retreat, practicing mindful touching. We need the support of our friends in the practice. In my tradition, we say, a practitioner without a sangha is like a tiger that has left his mountain. A tiger that has left his mountain will be caught by humans and killed. A practitioner without a sangha will abandon her practice after three months, four months. And that is why taking refuge in a sangha is our practice. Setting up a Sangha and get the support of Sangha is very important. Taking refuge in the Sangha is not a matter of faith. It is a matter of practice. Sangha building is a very important practice. Therefore, if you have seen the importance of mindfulness practice, if you are convinced that the energy of mindfulness is the energy that can heal us and transform the pain in us, and then do your best 
to set up a group of friends in order to practice together. We can come together once a week or more frequently to organize days of mindfulness or hours of mindfulness, walking mindfully together, drinking tea mindfully together, sitting together, breathing together, and supporting each other in touching the positive aspects in us and around us. And that is why it's very important to come together and practice. And that is done in the present moment. We have the tendency to be forgetful. Forgetfulness is the opposite of mindfulness. We are alive, but we don't know that we are alive. We walk, and we don't know that we are walking. We breathe, and we are not aware that we are breathing. And we live in that state of forgetfulness. And we have created the habit of being forgetful. When I touch my eyes with mindfulness, I become mindful of the presence of my eyes, breathing in. I am aware of my eyes. Breathing out, I smile to my eyes. That practice reminds me that having eyes in good condition is a wonderful thing. I only need to open my eyes in order to see all kinds of colors, all kinds of forms. And that is enough to bring me a lot of joy. Those of us who have lost our eyesight suffer because we don't see anything. And we want to recover our eyesight. We say, if I can see things again, I'll be like in paradise. It's wonderful to see the light, to see the vegetation, the blue sky, the children running. It's so wonderful to see the forms and the colors. And yet we forget that having eyes in good condition is a wonderful thing. So with mindfulness, with mindfulness, we recognize that our eyes are there in good condition. And we just open our eyes and enjoy what is there in the realm of forms and colors. And that alone can bring us a lot of joy and happiness. But because we live in forgetfulness, We forget that we have many basic conditions for happiness. There are many conditions for happiness within us and around us. But because we are not mindful, we step on them, we ignore them, and we complain that we are very unhappy. Breathing in, I touch my heart. Breathing out, I smile to my heart. And when you do that, you become enlightened. You become aware that you have a heart that still functions normally. It's wonderful to have a heart that can still function normally. I smile to my heart with gratitude. I know that my heart is working day and night in order to keep me alive. It pumps so much blood every day to nourish every cell of my body. I have the chance to sleep during the night to rest, but my heart, as she operates full time, day and night, to keep me alive. 
And when I touch my heart with that kind of awakening, understanding, love, spring, and that is the outcome of touching, mindful touching, touching the basic conditions of peace, of joy, of happiness within me and around me. It's very important that we practice uh, mindful breathing in our daily life in order to give us an opportunity to go back to the present moment, to the calm and the peace that is already in us, to touch that calm and peace. Breathing in, I calm myself. Breathing out, I smile. You practice uh, several times like that, anytime, anywhere. And we learn the new habit of being with peace, being peace. There is an old habit of being carried away by forgetfulness. And practicing mindful breathing, we learn a new habit of being with peace, of being peace, of uh, relaxing in order for us to touch uh, really the elements of peace inside and outside of us. It's very important to touch peace. Peace is already there to some extent. And if we don't give it a chance, we will lose peace gradually. When you drive, you practice mindfulness of driving. You enjoy your breathing in and out. It is possible. When you stop at a red light, look at the red light and smile. Usually we think of the red light as something preventing us to go there, to arrive. So we may get irritated because of the red light. But in this practice, the red light becomes a bell of mindfulness. You look at the red light, you smile, and you breathe in and out, and sit back relaxingly, breathing in. I calm myself, breathing out, I smile. You go back to the present moment. You enjoy that moment. And the red light becomes a friend, become a, a bell of mindfulness. Something unpleasant becomes something pleasant. We have the habit energy of uh, wanting to arrive. That is why we want to go as quickly as possible. But according to this practice, we arrive at every moment. Life can be found only in the present moment. Everything that we look for must be found in the present moment. Peace, joy, happiness. Buddha, the kingdom of God, everything should be touched in the present moment. And if we abandon that moment, we abandon everything. What is our final destination? If we abandon the present moment, Our final destination may be our death. We don't want to arrive there. We want to go in the direction of life. And life is found in the present moment. 
Therefore, we have to arrive every moment. And that is what walking meditation is about. In walking meditation, you arrive at every moment. That is why you don't rush. By each step, you touch the peace and the joy in yourself, in life. And life is a walk. We should be able to experience life deeply every step we make. Learning to dwell in the present moment, to touch life deeply in that moment, is our practice. And we should learn to develop that kind of new habit. And by touching what is wonderful and healing that is available in the present moment, could we heal ourselves and heal the world? So driving is also a practice. You drive and you don't forget the present moment. You enjoy driving the present moment. You can practice breathing in, breathing out, smiling, and be with whatever is there in the present moment. When you hear the telephone ringing, practice breathing in and out as if the telephone sound is the voice of the Buddha calling you back to the present moment. That is what we call telephone meditation. You need to convince the people who live with you to practice telephone meditation together. In Plum Village, we always practice telephone meditation. Every time we hear the telephone ringing, we stop thinking, talking, listen deeply to the telephone, and we enjoy our in-breath and our breath. We do that during the first ring, and the second, and only when the telephone rings for the third time, would we stand up and go to the telephone in walking meditation style, breathing, smiling, make you fresh. And when you pick up the telephone, you are fresh and peaceful. That's not only good for you, but good for the person who is calling. If you are the one who makes the call, you might practice uh, too. Touching the telephone, you practice breathing in, calming, breathing out, smiling. A few times, there is a gata, a poem for practicing. Words can travel thousands of miles. They can build more understanding and mutual acceptance. I vow that my words will be like flowers. I vow that my words will be like jewels. And that is uh, to make the vow to use loving speech. Loving speech can make many people happy. And after breathing in and out like that, you pick up the telephone and you dial. And when you finish dialing, you listen to the telephone of the other house. And now you know that the other person is breathing in and out, listening to the same sound. And you tell yourself that why you don't do that. So you continue to enjoy breathing in, breathing out. Imagine both of you, the caller and the one who is receiving the telephone, both of you are breathing in and out. That is very beautiful. That is the practice of peace. And after you know that the other person will not pick up the telephone before the third uh, ring, so you have the chance to practice breathing in and out again three more times. 
And when the other person pick up the telephone, you know that the quality of the conversation must be good. Both of you are fresh because of the breathing and smiling. We have to practice in that way in order to have uh, plenty of chance to practice uh, mindfulness in our daily life, which is sometimes very uh, busy. And uh, I very much wish that you be able to contact a community of practice near the place you live. Or if there is no Sangha, you have the opportunity to build a small group of people around you in order to continue the practice. May each day of your life be a day of mindfulness.